Try looking out the window right now. Maybe there's nothing extraordinary to see. Like, the world has always been this way. But actually, it has not. Take a look at this. If the age of civilization were shown like this, we would be right here, at this point. Everything you just saw, all of it was only discovered and built in the last three generations of our civilization, at these three tiny dots. Right now, you're probably wondering, how did we, the human species, get here? To an era that is so short and filled with a civilization so advanced it makes technology feel like magic. Okay, take a deep breath and get ready, because we're going on an adventure to the past. We're diving into one of the biggest mysteries of civilization, how humans evolved and won the competition between life and death. Before we go way back, we need to truly grasp how young our civilization actually is. Imagine this is us. This is our parents. And this is our grandparents. If we go back a bit more, the idea that the Earth revolves around the Sun was just popularized right here. And that's quite a leap from the time of Aristotle, the guy we often see in science school books. If we go back about 190 generations, our ancestors might have been helping the pharaohs build the pyramids of Giza. And the first time his story was ever written down, that was at least 200 generations ago. Okay, but the point is, 500 generations equal around 12,500 years. That sounds long, but actually, when you compare it to the entire time since Homo sapiens first appeared, it's really not that long. Especially compared to the time of the ancestors of our species. So yeah, for hundreds of thousands of years, our ancestors spent their time hunting and gathering. Now, let's go even further back to the era before civilization even existed. Almost two centuries ago, miners in a valley in Germany found some bones. At first, they thought they were bare bones. But after being studied, it turns out to be the fossil of one of our ancient cousins, the first ancient human we ever named. In the next century, researchers found even older fossils early humans from Africa who lived 2 million years ago. They were able to survive for hundreds of thousands of years until eventually their numbers were overtaken by them, the first early human to stand upright. Then, around this year, scientists discovered a fossil from a species that was even more ancient, one that lived 3 million years ago. This fossil helped researchers a lot in understanding the mystery of human evolution, because its skull was still intact. But the reality is, our story started even way before that. By this year, we found a fossil of a human ancestor that was 7 million years old. To understand just how long that is, here's a simple way to picture it. If 7 million years was a 24-hour day, all of human civilization would only show up in the last two minutes. Our current era and our parents would only appear in the final second. To this day, there are still many mysteries and puzzle pieces we haven't fully figured out about human evolution. But one thing's for sure. There was a time when many types of early humans lived at the same time, until, one by one, they went extinct leaving behind one winner, a being with a brain three times bigger than any other human species. That is the sapiens. Thanks to the discovery of early human fossils, we know that our species began to develop around 200,000 years ago in Africa. At first, humans were a weak species. They lost to wild animals, could not handle the cold, and had to hide just to find food. Yeah, we can say humans were struggling to survive in a harsh nature and were threatened by other species. Until finally, they figured out a way to become giants. No, they did not grow into huge-bodied creatures. The answer was not the size, but the numbers. Yeah, that's when humans started forming larger groups 
And this mattered. Because while one human would lose to a giant prehistoric elephant, ten or even hundreds of humans could take it down. Together they could help one another. And these groups began to spread everywhere. They also started using simple tools to help with daily life. And since our ancestors figured out how to tame fire, they could cook up foods that used to be tough to chew and pretty low on nutrients. That extra boost made their bodies healthier and their brains grew bigger. Before long, humans were thinking more creatively, telling stories and communicating with each other. But living in groups alone was not enough to make us the most powerful species. There was one major force that brought all these people together, into thousands and eventually into millions. It might sound insignificant, but back then this one force was like an incredible discovery that changed everything. It was imagination. This is when humans began to use abstract thinking and language to create ideas, team up with one another, and eventually find a drive to not just survive, but to conquer the world. But there's a darker side we rarely talk about. We already know that Homo sapiens probably once shared the world with other early humans, including them. In fact, there were even interbreeding happening between species, and the traces might still be left within us today. But it's also possible that our species beat them in the fight for food, and that might be why only Homo sapiens survive, becoming the only human species left. But no matter how great humans got at surviving, they still had to hunt every time their stomachs growled. They moved from place to place, becoming the species that explored more of the Earth than any other. But over time, they realized something. Their numbers were growing. A single hunt was not always enough to feed everyone anymore. Luckily, the earth was warming up back then. They started noticing the leftovers of their fruit. Some had turned into small trees. And eventually, they discovered a magical way to grow food from the ground. Since they no longer had to hunt all the time, humans had more time to look up at the blue sky. They began observing and wondering why do the seasons change and plants die? How does a tree grow from the ground? Why does day turn into night? Humans started noticing these patterns, creating myths, and at the same time, asking big questions about the universe. To make their new food sources grow faster, they chose strategic places to settle. Because of this, humans began living in one place, forming communities and documenting. These carvings on stone became the beginning of, so to speak, preserving knowledge. Knowledge that used to only be passed down by word of mouth could now be read by future generations. And that's not all. Humans also began to develop one concept that would go on to change the world. Money. It started with bartering, deciding on tools to exchange, and eventually creating a shared form of currency across a region, coins. Civilizations began to spread. People got used to living side by side. After that, rules were made. Rulers rose and fell, and society became more organized. We started drawing lines on maps and figuring out fair ways to govern citizens. Beyond that, civilizations traded with one another, sharing culture, ways of life, beliefs, and knowledge, including how to make paper. Knowledge became easier to spread, and it kept growing. Sadly, humans never quite forgot how to fight. Kingdom after kingdom fell. Because of war, many thinkers and scientists were forced to flee, carrying piles of ancient knowledge with them to Europe, sparking the scientific revolution that happened there. After the wars, a lot of knowledge was translated and spread all across Europe. And one of the biggest keys behind this was the printing press. The number of books exploded, because we no longer had to spend time copying them by hand. Many thinkers, whose names you often see in school books, emerged during this era. Philosophy, astronomy, biology, physics, chemistry. Thousands of science experiments were carried out, 
producing all kinds of theories and laws. With knowledge continuing to grow, we started inventing new tools that made it easier to produce more stuff. Wealth and prosperity grew of humans to compete over who could control production. And with the personal wealth of some people piling up, up come rivals to kingdoms and nations, who sometimes ended up even stronger and more ruthless. At the same time, many nations became eager to explore the earth, chasing after riches, glory, and spreading their beliefs. Sadly, some of us became greedy and brought suffering to the world, not just through weapons, but also through invisible creatures. The suffering did not stop there. Twice, humanity went to war from every corner of the world. And this time, not only with sticks, stones, swords, or gunpowder. Until one time, one genius wrote one letter, which ended up pushing a project to build the one most terrifying weapon in the history of humanity. Maybe we got lucky. That weapon of mass destruction at that time succeeded in bringing the curtain down on the world war. And thanks to it, many high-tech military inventions kept developing, eventually becoming part of everyday life. We made metal machines weighing hundreds of tons fly beyond the sky. We developed antibiotics to fight off diseases that once left humans helpless. Some of them even wiped out completely. Communication became effortless, chatting with friends thousands of kilometers away in less than a second. The world could now be recorded and instantly shared. If our ancient grandparents came into today's world, they might think we are living in a world full of magic. And in the future, life might feel even more magical. The power of genetic engineering could one day let humans, in a way, decide how we want to evolve. We may not be superhumans yet, but we are the only species that now lives with the help of all sorts of advanced tools. And maybe one day, medicine will not just heal, but prevent all illness. Robots could serve us. Hunger and poverty could become bedtime stories we tell our grandkids. As for outer space, it might not just be something we stare at night, but a place we actually visit on holidays. Hundreds of thousands of years have passed, and now, here we are. Honestly, maybe we're not that different from our ancestors. We're still living under the same sky, still going through lives filled with wonder, heartfelt struggles, and big dreams. From paintings on cave walls to images and videos floating around the internet. The big question is, how long will the story of humankind last? Can we actually make those big dreams come true? Or will our own greed end up leading us to destruction? In the end, only us, the human race, can answer that.